One of the biggest reasons people don't see results on Instagram is because they don't have a strategy. They have some vague idea of what they want to achieve on the platform, increase their followers, boost engagement, but without specificity and a clear plan of action, growth on Instagram can feel like the hardest thing in the world. I work with clients all the time on their Instagram strategies, and in this video, I want to peel back the curtain of my secret world. Okay, okay, so my secret world is really just my desk and endless cups of tea and show you what it takes to put together a really strong Instagram strategy so that you can go off and create one for yourself. The software I use to build an Instagram strategy is Notion. I use this because it's the simplest, most beautiful software that you can do almost anything with. Plus you can use almost all of Notion's features for free and you know how much sweeter something tastes when it is totally free of charge. And if you'd like to get your hands on the template that I walk you through in this video, you can find that at the link in the description box below. Now, before you even think about opening up Notion, the first step is to get all of your dreams, goals, hopes, ways of working, what your sales process looks like, all of it out of your head and onto paper. When I work with a client, this is the stage where they fill out a questionnaire so that I can get as close to being inside their brain as possible. I ask them questions like, who is your ideal customer? What are your top three goals on Instagram in the next six months? What have you tried in the past to help you with Instagram marketing that has worked and that hasn't worked for you? What are your top three posts in the last three months for the following metrics? Saves, shares, comments, website taps, and follows. By understanding who they're trying to attract, what's worked before and what hasn't, and what their goals are, I can put together a strategy that will help them reach the right people and hit their goals in a way that's sustainable. For example, if the person I work with has seen huge results with carousel posts in the past and finds getting on video extremely challenging, then I won't develop a strategy that's really heavily focused on video. I'll recommend video because I always do, but I'm not gonna create a plan that will keep my clients stuck. I'll create one that works with their strengths and gets them creating and posting as consistently as possible. Now that I have all of this juicy information, I start building out the strategy in Notion. The first place I start is Instagram goals and how I'll get there. This is a really helpful reminder for my clients whenever they open up Notion of what their goals are and what they need to do to see results. This is the foundation of the entire strategy and content calendar. But before we get there, let me show you this section up here, which I love, and that is the shortcut section. All of those things from the content pillars to the Reels filming equipment, to the link to the scheduler you use, they're all stored on random bits of paper or up here or in random Google Drive folders. And everything's a bit of a mess. Everything's a little bit disorganized. And the whole point of the Notion dashboard and this area in particular is to get all of those things in one place clean and organized and easy to access. For this client, I've got an overview of her strategy here, the type of content and its cadence, a place to store client testimonials, which can be a simple link to a Google Drive folder, a link to my recommended filming tools in case she wants to purchase these in the future, and content for Instagram story highlights. There's even a shortcut to email content because I'm a huge believer in the power of combining Instagram marketing with email marketing. So this dashboard is a great place to keep on top of past and upcoming email content. Next comes the space to brain dump ideas. Many of my clients are like me and get their best ideas at the most random times, walking the dog, in the shower, when they're meant to be working on something else entirely. And that's what this space is for, to add those initial ideas in their rough form before they become a more developed piece of content. They can add ideas into this table whenever they get them. And then when they're ready to add them to the content calendar, they can just assign a date and check the box added to calendar. And because this table is connected to the content calendar below, they will all automatically be visible in this content calendar down here. Since I'm putting this strategy and content plan together for my client and skipping over adding in my ideas as and when they come to me, I'm gonna go ahead straight away and start building out the next 12 weeks of content. For most of my clients, I suggest a posting cadence of three grid posts per week and four Instagram stories per week. I've created these two templates, one for grid posts and one for Instagram stories to make the process of building out these ideas super simple. So what I do is I change my Instagram content calendar to calendar view. I click into a day of the week and select the Instagram post template. The great thing about this is that I can immediately start writing the caption and add an image here from my client's gallery or link to a template on Canva. There's also these handy properties that allow me to categorize my posts according to their status, the type of content, and who is responsible for this piece of content. Really handy if my client has a VA or social media manager to support them. Let me show you how valuable these properties can be when you're managing the often complicated content creation process. If I hit the properties button, now I can decide which ones I want to see at a glance. 
Turning these checkboxes on means I can see what still needs to be done for these pieces of content. And if I click on type of post, I can see whether my client has a good balance of different content types or whether, for example, there's slightly too many reels compared to carousel posts. The final view that I love is the board view. This allows my client to see their entire workflow from start to finish and where pieces of content are in the process. All I do is click groups and make sure status is selected. Now, whenever my client works on a piece of content and changes the status from outlining in progress to caption being written to ready to be filmed, it will move that piece of content along accordingly. Or if they prefer, they can just drag and drop the content cards over to the relevant status as and when it's ready. With all of the content ideas I plan, I ensure a mixture of personal posts, value-driven posts, and sales posts, where they talk explicitly about the services or products they have available, what their client or order process looks like, and what other happy customers have to say about investing in their product or service. And once that's done, I jump on a Zoom call with my client and walk them through the entire strategy document and the content plan so they can take it away and start using it confidently as their own. Now, if you remember at the top of this video, I talked about how important it is for me to get a lot of information from my client before I even touch Notion so that I can put together the most robust strategy and content plan that I can. And one of those key pieces of information is their insights. So I understand what content has performed well in the past so that we can build on this and do more of what's working and less of what isn't. If you want to learn how you can use Instagram insights to create better content and grow faster on Instagram, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this video right here after this one.